I have a friend who recently got eye contacts, a new prescription, and uh, and he put them in, and he was really frustrated at first because it made his vision worse. He said everything was blurry. He said I couldn't drive, I couldn't read. He said, but I assumed it was because it was a new prescription, so I just tried to get used to it. I left them in for a few days, and it didn't get any better. And so he was going to call the eye doctor and complain when suddenly a thought occurred to him. He had a different prescription for each eye, and he wondered if he got it mixed up. So he swapped the eye contacts uh, between his eyes, and all of a sudden he could see clearly, right? The problem wasn't with his contacts. It was with the user <laughs> of the contacts. He wasn't putting them in correctly. Today, I want to uh, talk about anger. Anger's everywhere right now in our culture. Everywhere you look, people are angry about a variety of things. And anger, I want to tell you, can be a good thing. Anger can drive us to good change, right? A righteous anger handled properly. But anger can also be wrong-headed. We can get angry uh, for wrong reasons, uh, with with partial information, and then we can mishandle our anger, and that can lead to devastation. In fact, that can make situations dramatically worse, can rob potential good situations of any good that could come from them. So just like those contact lenses, the user of the emotion of anger must use it properly. And so we're going to do a case study this morning. We're going to look at John chapter 2, where Jesus kind of has his own version of a riot in the temple right? John chapter 2, starting in verse 13. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons and the money changers sitting there. Verse 15, look at what he does. He makes a whip, making a whip of cords. He drove them out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen, and he poured out the coins and the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away. Do not make my father's house into a house of trade. There's no question that Jesus is angry. I mean, for heaven's sakes, he goes out and makes a whip and comes back. Like this is a a difficult image for us to imagine with Jesus, right? We think of him as being this gentle, kind of of humble uh, 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 person, right? And yet here he goes out and makes a whip and he uses that whip to drive all these money changers out of the temple. He's angry. And and so I just want to make a few observations about the anger of Jesus. First of all, when Jesus is angry, it's always justified. It has been said that we should fear the anger of a gentle man. The point I'm making here is that when Jesus is angry, it's not just a random burst of anger. He should be angry. Another observation is Jesus' action in his anger is also always justified. Jesus is not having a, a, a temper tantrum here in John chapter 2. He's not overreacting. He's not being overly sensitive. He's not mishandling his anger as you and I often do. He is doing the exact right thing, which makes you wonder, what is it that is so bad about what these money changers were doing? So Jesus' anger is always just. Jesus' reaction to his anger is always just. But man's anger is rarely just. Maybe it's never just. In James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, James encourages Christians to be slow to anger. Verse 20, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Even if we get angry for a proper reason, we usually overreact and make the situation worse. In most cases, our anger is misinformed. We don't have all the information or we are, we are angry for selfish reasons, and so we end up making awful mistakes. Why is Jesus angry in John chapter 2? Well, there, there was a Gentile court in the temple. It was a place where Gentiles could come to pray. This is where these money changers were doing their business. And so in Mark's account of the story, Jesus says in Mark chapter 11, verse 17, is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? but you have made it into a den of robbers. Jesus was angry because people were being kept away from God. People couldn't pray in this, Gentiles couldn't pray in this court because of what was going on there. And we see this throughout Jesus' story. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 13, Jesus says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. 
for you neither enter yourselves or allow those who would enter to go in. Jesus is angry at the Pharisees because they're keeping people from, from God. In Mark chapter 10, verse 13, uh, people were trying to bring children to Jesus. Look what happens. They were bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them, and the disciples rebuked them. The disciples were trying to keep these children away from Jesus. Listen to what it says in verse 14. But when Jesus saw it, when Jesus saw his disciples keeping the children from him, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them. Are you angry today? Are you angry about racial injustice? Are you angry about rioting and looting? Are you angry about politics? Are you angry about the COVID-19 responses or lack thereof? I have three questions for you. Maybe you're angry about something else. I have three questions for you, whatever you're angry about. Number one, why are you angry? Examine it carefully. Are you operating on all of the information? Are you being empathetic to those that you're angry with? Is your anger just? Second question, how are you handling your anger? Are you doing something, saying something that you will later regret? Remember, you and I rarely handle anger properly. Third and most important question, would Jesus drive you out of the temple? In other words, in your anger, are you standing between people and God? Are you misrepresenting Jesus? Are you making peripheral things too important? Are you shutting out or shutting down conversation and opportunity with condemning and arrogant statements of so-called righteous anger? Listen, righteous anger can be a clarifying sort of thing in your life. It can help you see things more clearly than ever before but only if it's God's anger.